Good morning, guys. Day three into this journey, and this week's song is Glorious Day. If this is your first time joining me, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube, or you can find me on Facebook and Instagram there as well. Today, we are picking up with the chorus, which is where we left off yesterday, only because it was so good what the Lord was showing me through that. But today, we're going to keep going on with the chorus of Glorious Day. You called my name and I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Lord, you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day so you called my name and I came running out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. We're going to jump straight into the text, picking up from where we left off yesterday. John chapter 11, verse 42 is where I want to start. Now to catch you up, Jesus has shown up to the tomb where Lazarus had been buried for four days now. And he previously had asked them to take the stone and move it away. And Martha, Lazarus' sister, was like, whoa. Um, if we do that, <laughs> there could be some odors coming out. He's been dead for a few days now. But Jesus says to her, do you not believe? I told you if you believe, I will do what I can do. So he says here in verse 42, I knew that you always hear me. This is him referring to the Father. But I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, when Jesus said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. When I think about the fact of being bound together, um, in this case, to preserve his body in a way in a proper way for burial in that time when I look at it on the emotional side I can literally think of times where I physically had nothing restricting me but emotionally I felt like I was in a straitjacket like I could physically feel like I was in a straitjacket because the binding of my emotions my heart and the things that I was that was weighing on me that had me in that tomb, I couldn't find a way out. No matter how hard I pushed and pulled, I couldn't find a way out. But I can still see and, and remember those moments when I would be, whether it was at school, at home, at church, in the random places, because that's where the Lord has met me many times, in, 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 in random places or places I would never think. I can recall one time in my life and over the next few months or years of us doing this, I'll probably share that story, but I can literally recall one time the Lord meeting me on the floor of my apartment when I was in college. Uh, but when I think about those moments where I was so bound, but then to just feel a peace and to feel freedom, it makes me be able to, I believe, relate to the understanding of this story and to see the power that just the voice of Jesus can bring, but think about the fact that God sent Jesus to do just that for us. He was giving them the physical orders to unbind him and let him go. In our minds, we see that as he's telling those who are there who loved him, who loved Lazarus, and it's like, wow, he has come alive. And, and the first thing you probably do is stand there like in awe of, wait, whoa, what is happening? And he's saying, unbind him, unbind him. I'm pretty sure he was like trying to move or, or something and said, let him go. Unbind him and let him go free. For me, I see this in a totally different way, more of like a spiritual warfare type thing. And I know that's that's a whole nother level to even try to step into right now. But but just follow me with this. I believe that Jesus has the power and the the ability to speak death to speak freedom to speak um, 
distance as far as the east is from the west to the things in our life that bind us. So when he is saying to them, unbind him and let him go, I know the Lord has fought on my behalf against Satan, saying he is mine. You can back up and let him go. Step away from him. And, and the cool thing is, if you think about what I was sharing yesterday about not isolating yourself and allowing yourself to be surrounded by people who can help you roll that stone away or they can speak life into you, that is exactly what I believe the Lord wants for us. Because in a season of life when you need someone to speak directly to the enemy and say, let him go. He does not belong to you. Satan, you have no place in this house, in this home, in this person's heart. You need people in your life to be able to do that, to, to speak the anointing and authority of the Lord over you and into your situation and to intercede on your behalf that will allow you in that state of being mummified or, or, or restricted to know that you can release that, to know that you are free. To know that the things you are trying to uh, hide, you have no reason to hide them. Not only do you not have a reason to hide them, they no longer can cling to you. I think it's beautiful in this to understand and to be able to visually see if someone's been dead and they've been wrapped, then the bandages are probably st sticking to them in a sense where they don't just fall. So they have to pull off. That is the same way our shame does. It sticks to us. and. If you think about it, unless it is completely removed, it can just hang there. And for me, that was the reality of some of the things in my life from years ago. I literally felt like I had released them and were done, but there was that little piece that was on the backside that I didn't let go of that revealed itself over time, that it was still there and I was dragging it along. It was like this long cord, I'd say, connected and the bands was touching the ground because over the years and over the traveling of my life, I just collected more dirt and more things added to it to the point where I look behind me and I see all this junk that this one shame or this one thing that had happened in my life that I had not released that was forcing me to not step into the glorious light and to, to know that there's freedom in Jesus or to fully live in that freedom. It was collecting things along the ear that kept pulling me down. A lot of times things can happen in our lives we can have struggles and temptations that if we don't do something about them, which means give them over to the Lord, repent, release, and then uh, surround ourselves with people who can help us walk through that and walk completely away from that and have true freedom in Christ, then that one thing can become to be this massive baggage that just keeps filling up over the years with more junk and keep weighing us down. And I am living proof that that is possible and that can happen. And so I say to you that I don't want that for anyone. I strongly believe that as Jesus spoke into to that tomb and he said, Lazarus, in a shouting voice, the Lord whispers to us. The Lord speaks loudly to us. The cool thing is he meets us where we are. Sometimes we are so dead that we need someone to scream our name. And then sometimes we are so broken that we just need a gentle, still, small voice to just say, Frank. That could be the place where you are sitting today um, wanting to experience all that God has for you in this life. And you are sitting there thinking, I am so over being in this tomb. I am so over the shame. I'm so over the guilt. I'm so over the, the weight of it all. I know that the stone has been rolled away. And I hear him calling my name. And you may even be thinking, I've never heard it. Well, I'm telling you now, come out. Come out of that tomb. Come out of that depression. Come out of that, that, that place that the enemy is saying, this is, this is the worth that you have on this earth. It's not true. Allow yourself to know that you are loved. And allow yourself to be surrounded by people who want to speak life into you who want to see those bandages come off, who want to see you breathe again the way you were intended to breathe. Come out of that grave running into the glorious day, the glorious freedom, the glorious healing, the glorious life, the newness that Jesus and only Jesus can bring this side of heaven. Mm.
God, I just come to you right now thanking you for this morning, Lord. And I thank you that Jesus always knows where and how to meet us. I thank you for the fact that you actually know us by name. To the point where you can call out to us to get our attention to say, I care about you so much in the season of life you're walking through. I'm here with you, but I want you to come out of it. I'm not just here to watch you coast through it. I want you freed. I want the chains gone. I want you to be able to stand. I want you to be able to breathe and know that you are alive. To know that you are loved and cared for. God, if there's anyone today that is in need of hearing their name called, I ask you to actually tangibly, physically, use a loved one to text them today, or to call them today, so they can know that you mean business when you say, I love you unconditionally. And maybe someone watching this knows that someone has been dead and they need to be the one that calls or reach out and says, come out of that. Not only are you going to come out of that tomb, I'm going to I'm going to help you unwrap the bandages that have held you down. I'm going to help you step into this new light, this new glorious day and into this freedom. God, we lay all this before you and I ask you to do what only you can do. You called my name And I ran out that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Lord, you called my name And I ran out of that grave to your glorious day oh your glorious day Lord your glorious day your glorious day thank you guys so much for joining me look forward to meeting you here tomorrow morning 8 a.m central standard time i pray that you guys have a blessed day